Yug. Would you look at the time? today uh, I know some of you are mentioning the dual logs dual log sometimes comes here already <laughs> sadly dual logs already knows about me hello hello everyone demonstrate of five credit cards wait what about credit cards these are not credit cards these are actual 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 Yu-Gi-Oh cards but welcome Welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! presentation! That you guys have all been waiting for. Uh, how is everyone doing? I hope you're doing good. I hope uh, your week is going smoothly. One more day! One more day until it's the weekend, guys. Very, very exciting. I hope everyone's doing very good. And not credit cards, though! What if I put my credit card in a face-down uh, face attack position on this dual disc? What would happen? What would happen? Would it just summon set of Kaiba or something? I have no clue. If it was if it was possible, I'm sure Kaiba would have just done that instead. Uh, hope you're doing well today. Yeah, I'm doing well. You get high APR. Oh no! <laughs> Are you Matt Pat? Uh, what what do I have to do with Matt Pat? What do I have to I don't even I don't even watch Matt Pat videos. Why are you guys mentioning that? What do I what do I have to do with Matt Pat? Hello? Take that back. Take that back, you filthy zoomer. Take that back. Just kidding. Yeah! Brooklyn Rage! <laughs> uh, hello? Yes, we're covering basic lore today. I think I just don't know. We might make some... Uh, how do you say? Make some references to the... Uh, the memes that come out of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, be sure to just ask, because I will be happy to explain. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! memes. Shino, what was your first deck? Mine is Monarchs. My first real deck? Or my first crappy deck that I played with on the playground? Uh, my first real competitive deck was Heroes. Elemental Heroes. You know, when Dark Law was like the the meta 
Uh, I played that. I played that for a while. And then, and then there's Necroz and Shadals. I got sick of Necroz. And then I left. Yeah, that was a story. Yeah, it was it was budget compared to the other decks. It was like five thousand dollars or something to build a Necroz deck at the time, and I was like, I am not gonna do that. So uh, I played Heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I don't think they're very viable now. They got destroyed. Yeah, very expensive. Toon World. Did you guys know that Toon World? Toon World, the cards. I didn't put it in this conversation. Uh, co not conversation. I didn't put it in this presentation. But Toon World, did you guys know? On top of being a reference to American cartoons, they're also making fun of Magic the Gathering. Because Toon Monsters cannot attack on the same. <laughs> yeah, they cannot attack on the same turn that they're summoned. Yeah. Because in in Magic the Gathering, you you can't attack because there's like mana sickness when you first summon a monster to the field. So that's why that's why it's making f yeah yeah summon sickness has a mana sickness when you summon something in Magic. So the Toon monsters cannot attack on the first turn. That's some trivia you should know, but I didn't put it in this because I thought it might have been too niche. But since you guys are mentioning it. I guess I'll say it now. Yeah, I have a lot of very uh, useless knowledge. You know, we're not covering like Albaz or stuff like that because I feel like only Yugi boomers who are still playing the game know what an Albaz is. Okay, okay. I didn't. Uh, there. Like, I have a lot of other favorite sort of archetypes that I really love, but. For the you for the person who doesn't know anything but the main like anime and GX and all the memes, like the basic stuff, I feel like it would go over their heads. So I only really included the really basic stuff to get us started. If we like what I have presented today, then maybe next time I'll definitely put more like niche lore into it. So yeah, 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 yeah. Mmm. Uh, Despia hate! Despia hate! You- you know what I hate? When you play Master Duel at, like, night... If you're in NA and you play Master Duel at night... And it's all sweaty JPs on the server... Like, every- every two or three decks is a Despia. It's a Despia deck. And it's- I HATE IT! <laughs> I HATE IT! I HATE IT SO MUCH! WHY DO THE JPs LOVE DESPIA SO MUCH?! Ah, it's like Despia, Flower and Dreeze, Tea Elements. Those three just on cycle. I hate it so much. I hate it! Ah, the <laughs> Pay the tax! I know, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Branded Fusion, yeah, I hate Despias. Can't do it, can't do it. Oh my god, what do you mean fire? So it agrees. Guilty as charged. I love Despia. It's okay. Everybody has their different like metas. But I was talking to Nova the other day, my friend Nova from V Reverie, and she's also noticing that a lot of people are leaving Master Duel because they're annoyed with Despia and Tier Laments and Branded. Yeah, I get it. It's tiring. It's tiring. It's been a while. I wish Konami would give some other supports for other archetypes, but here we are. Here we are. Attempts hairs on point. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. The band. The the band. I love how when you guys say band or band, you guys make it look like an instrument band. <laughs> all right, all right. My ESL cookies. Let's go. All right. Let let English English lesson. <laughs> English lesson. Ikuze. Uh, hold on. Let me type it out. Let me type it out for you lovely cookies. Thank you so much for your $2 supply! Rubber Shoulder of Labyrinth is fun. They got new support finally. Yeah, Nova loves Labyrinths. She loves mommies. Uh, five, thank you for the $5 supply! Where pipe. As someone who wasn't allowed to watch when I was younger, this is pretty unknown to me. I humbly request you to summarize the entire series in 60 seconds. Just watch the Abridged series by Little Karibo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the $2 you bought! Chain Duel, thank you. you. Hello, Yugi boy. Should I change costumes instead? I, I think that would scare people away. 
<laughs> I think I think that would scare people away, really, if I if I was Pegasus the entire time. Oh no. Okay, 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 fine, 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 fine. Fine! Fine! I'll do it for you. Peg Pegasus hair pinny. I search up Pegasus hair PNG and guess what it gives me? Yes! My little ponies! It's just giving me my little ponies! <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> no! Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> Not that Pegasus! Okay. Millennium I PNG. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, visit. Come on, give me this. Give me this. Alrighty. Let's see here. Come on, let me download it. Ah, uh, I have to do this. Captcha. A dollar sign there. Download, download, it's time! Um. Hold on, hold on, hold on! Alright, 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 we're cooking, we're cooking! We're cooking! Hold on! Um. Hold on, Pegasus. Pegasus hair. Maximum. Maximilian Pegasus hair. Okay, I think I'm just gonna have to make my own really quick. Do you guys mind waiting? Well, I make this real quick. Okay. Uh, Maximilian Pegasus PNG. Alright, alright. I'm gonna have to do this myself. Yeah, hold on. I have to do this myself because people cannot give me the right file. I guess this is what I'm gonna have to do. Uh, okay, okay. What is it? Mmm, Kaiba boy. Ah, uh, no! Why would it let me save the picture? Naze! Naze, Dada! Save image as... There it is! Open my drawing program! Pegasus is your favorite character? You know, I didn't put his lore in here, but I really should have. He has a very sad story. You know, I, I think Maximilian Pegasus and Michael Jackson have a little bit in common. Is that... Is that okay to say? <laughs> is, it, is that... They, they have like a bit in common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like an inner innocence that they're always looking for. Yeah. Hmm. That's right, Kaiba boy. He's basically Michael Jackson. Uh, let me... Erase this. Hold on. Ah! How do I make this PNG without destroying the entire integrity of this hair? Oh, God. Uh. I'm like... Not in an ideal... Position to be making this. Because I'm just drawing on my screen right now while it's upright. Uh... To make sure... That I can get the best possible Pegasus hair for you in a short amount of time. Since you guys demanded it. And I'm here to please, right Kaiba boy? That sounds really bad. Okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh Alright, let's take this off. And then, um, you take this. Uh, file. Export. PNG. Pigasus hair. 
Um, right here. A uh, hundred. Okay. Okay. Alright. It, it should be good now. Uh, it should be good now. Let me, let me put on the hair. Since you guys like Pegasus better than Yugi. I understand. Wait, where did it go? <gasps> no! No, where did it go? Hold on, Pegasus. Pegasus hair. There. Uh, open a file location. I, where did I save it? Oh, well, it, it doesn't matter. It's right here. It's right here. Okay, it's a little scuffed. It's a little scuffed, but it's just gonna have to do. Mm. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hey, okay, here we go. All right, all right. We're 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 cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking. Mmm, Kaiba boy. Let me teach you about dual monsters. There is so much amazing lore that you have yet to learn. If you do not pay attention or come late to class, I will mint your grandpa into an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. At least your grandpa will never die if they are an NFT. Why resist, Cookie Boy? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's so realistic. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, <laughs> poor grandpa. Anything but an NFT? Well, too bad. Cause that is the... The future of Duo Monsters. Yes. Mm. I'm definitely gonna invite all of you to duel to the death. On Battle Island. Are you ready? At least I'll pay for your cruise all the way here. <laughs> Alright, alright, alright. Let's get started, shall we? You guys wanna get started? You guys wanna get started? Hajimarizo! Mmm, yes, Yugi boy. Let's start, shall we? Wait, I forgot to give you your English lesson. Alright, now, you know, I don't know why you guys need English lessons from me, Maximilian Pegasus. Uh, but, you know, when you say ban list, when you say ban, right, you say ban. Right. Uh, the the past tense of this is banned. Banned. That is the correct word, not banned. These are different words, my friends. So to be banned is like to be yeeted from my chat, dear cookies. And a banned, a banned. A band is this band. Uh, what's a good example? What's a good example? A band. This is a band. <laughs> so, so this, this is a band. <laughs> And and this is a band. A oh, band is getting banned from my chat. All right. Oh, <laughs> so, so that is your English lesson for today, everyone. That is the English lesson. I've seen several people in my pre-chat do that. Let, let me put away my clock since it's time for class. Hmm, we can do a little, little, a little later. Uh, all right, all right, Cookie Boy. All right, hope all of you are paying attention because now we the fun begins. Now the fun begins. All right, let me let me take this away. Let me take away today's English lesson. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, all right, bend it. No! I know English is tough. I believe in you. I believe in you, chat. I will... 
Though, though every day that passes, I start doubting more and more. More and more. More and more. I start being worried about you guys more and more. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, but let's keep going, shall we? Hold on, let me move you guys here. So I can read my presentation properly. Alrighty, hold on. Perfect. Are we paying attention? Let's get started. Our first up... Hold on, hold on. Wait, why is it not... Yeah, ah! Our first up is the blue eyes. White dragon. Yes. Uh, I think everybody here knows about the blue eyes white dragon. But did you guys know that the blue eyes has like some lore? Like a love story behind it. Yes, yes. It's a blue eyes alternative, but it's a cool picture, okay? It's a very, very cool picture. I know it's an alternative, but it's a very, very cool picture. Yes, yeah, so for some of you who don't know, it is actually Kaiba's real lover. That's right, Kaiba's a scaly, but I will go into detail why. That's right, Kaiba boy is a scaly. He is inclined towards the dragons, but I will explain that in a little bit. Hmm, cookie boy. Alright, so here's the original art of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. For those of you who are not familiar, this is the original art. Uh, it, the original card reads, This legendary dragon is a powerful engine of destruction. Virtually invincible, very few have faced this awesome creature and lived to tell its tale. Yeah, the original OG art! Yes! Kent, the classic card! Yeah, the real waifu, no effects. Back then, effect monsters are quite rare, so... It wasn't really a thing, but now if you played this on the on the field, uh GG. <laughs> GG, you'll get sent to the Shadow Realm real fast. Real, real fast. So mm. Alright. So yeah, he, again, he's Kaiba's waifu. She's Kaiba's waifu. Uh Kaiba also at some point made a Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. So it's like this is an airplane. It's not a dragon. It's an airplane. <laughs> it's it's an airplane. Uh, I have a Yu-Gi-Oh abridged clip of Kaiba in this jet. So let, let's take a listen. For those of you who are not familiar with it, let's take a look. All right, let me let me turn off this and then turn on this for you. Uh, it might be loud, so I'm gonna turn it down first, okay? And then I'll turn it up as we go. Wait, no, no, we go back, go back! Come on. Play. Play! Play. Oh. It's my own personal blue eyes jet. Yeah, hold on, hold on. What's in the flying blue crap is that? It's my own <laughs> personal blue eyes jet. Jealous Yugi of your completely ineffectual, impractical, totally not aerodynamic at all, childish looking rocket ship. Oh, definitely. You don't look silly, Kaiba. Mokuba, you like the jet, right? He's insane. See, Mokuba's having a good time. About that whole trying to murder us thing. I have a blue eyes white dragon jet. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> and sudden. He's right. Only <laughs> card games on motorcycles don't seem quite so ridiculous. <laughs> What's in the? So, so yeah, this uh, is not. Uh, of course, this is the part of the real anime. What are you guys talking about? But, <laughs> but yeah, he he made it into an airplane. So this airplane was then made into a card, in which you guys see here. Yeah, he, he got away. He got away with it. Let me turn the music back on. Here we go. Yeah, he does not care about the rules. He does not give give a single crap. He has money. He absolutely has money. Also, he has a point. He has a voice. Uh, jet. A uh, white jet. Nobody cares about any other argument. All right. I had no idea that Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series stole so many jokes until I was older. Dude, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series was the Yu-Gi-Oh! show. It saved the original Yu-Gi-Oh! It made it such a meme. And I don't think... I think people downplay the value the Abridged Series gave to the original series. Because <laughs> it brought so much... And it's really sad because, you know, um, little Karibo... He finds it hard to get actual voice acting jobs... Because he did Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. 
Because, like, they don't want that association, which I think is stupid, by the way. Hire little Karibo. I don't know why they're, like, gatekeeping him from actual roles. He did so good. He could voice the entire show with one man. He was showing off all of his skills. I don't know. I don't know why they do that. So, I uh, support little Karibo. Very, very sad. He, he made a post on his Twitter the other day about how he couldn't get, like, actual jobs because they know he's little Karibo. And it's very, very sad. It's very, very sad. I don't think it's very fair. Mm -mm -mm. He's a very good VA. Yeah, yeah. He has... He, yeah, he has... He's a little Minhara, you know? Aren't we all? Uh, but yeah, very, very... It does not make any sense. I hate how this world works sometimes, you know? Um... <laughs> VA community is a mess. It's all, it's like, uh, re recently I think it's just been more visible, but it's always been kind of a mess for as long as I've known it. Uh, but to learn about the blue eyes, we gotta learn about Kaiba first. <laughs> this is my favorite picture of Kaiba on the internet. <laughs> it's, I have this picture saved. I've had it saved for many, many years. It's a slice of my favorite strawberry shortcake made even better. <laughs> It's made even better by his pointy chin and a smug expression. Whoever made this cake is very talented. A true artist, a philosopher. <laughs> I love it so much. I, it's a strawberry shortcake. It's fresh cream, fluffy cake. You know, strawberries. God, I love strawberries. Topped off with a pointy chin Kaiba Bishonen uh, face, you know? I love it a lot. <laughs> Can you imagine a whole cake and each slice has a has a kaiba like this on it? I want one. I want one so bad. <laughs> I I'm too scared though if I ask a cake maker to make this. <laughs> what if I what if I try to make this someday, huh? What if I try? <laughs> oh no. Should I? Next birthday, maybe I'll attempt. Maybe I'll attempt to do it. Yeah, for a stream, oh my god. Oh my god, it's gonna be a disaster. 100k? No, I don't even know how to temper chocolate like this, I'll be honest. I guess I'll learn. I guess i learn. I don't really work with chocolate. I'm not like Anthony Guishan. I don't know how to do that. Mm -mm -mm. You can do your talents on parallel. I'm sure I can figure it out. It's just a matter of like, I have to buy a lot of things, you know, to make this cake and I, I don't know. Chocolate isn't that hard. Look, I, I don't like looking at temperature thermometers and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe I'll get it just a tempering machine. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Trial and error. I know, but you can't have trial and error for one stream. I don't have that much time. I don't have that much time. Maybe different from chocolate. This is chocolate. It's white chocolate and normal chocolate. Milk chocolate looks like. Uh, yeah, it's just milk chocolate and normal chocolate. Because luckily, Kaiba's hair is chocolate colored. You know? Mm mm mm. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, let's learn about Kaiba to learn about the blue eyes. All right, all right. Hold on. <clears throat> In the ancient... E Look at this lad. Look at... <laughs> hey, Kaiba with the dark, the, the dark skin tag. He is one step closer to being a dark, a dark elf, which makes me zug zug. <laughs> Uh, I'm a big fan of Presetto. I'm a big fan of Presetto. I think the blue looks dashing on his tan skin. Very, very nice. He just looks even more chadly than usual. You know? Yeah. Mm -mm. You're like a male dark elf! Exactly! He's like a male dark elf. He's... Uh, so... So... Everybody in Yu-Gi-Oh! has an ancient Egyptian counterpart. So his past self was... A uh, high priest in the Pharaoh's court. And we all know who the Pharaoh is. We all know... <laughs> we all know who the Pharaoh is, right? The Pharaoh is, uh, you know, Yami no Yugi, which is Atem. Yeah. I didn't put a picture of him here, but it is Atem. Yeah. Um, his ancient Egyptian... <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk about his girlfriend later, okay? Okay. Even Joey... I think Joey has... Uh, I think Joey has a counterpart. But it was like... A, 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 like a not not anyone important. <laughs> it was like a merchant or something. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. If you guys are yelling about spoilers when it's been over twenty 
years. Guys, it's been over 20 years. Some of you... Some of you are younger than that. <laughs> Please! <laughs> the spoilers! Too bad! This show is as old as a young adult now. Uh, anyways, let me, let me drink. 25 years old! That's a full-grown adult! This show can rent a, a truck and not pay extra. Think about that. This show, if it was a person, can rent a truck from U-Haul and not have to pay the you might crash this because you're young and stupid fee. Think about that for a second. Can you rent a truck at U-Haul? And not pay the I'm young and stupid uh, fee? Exactly. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You didn't know that fee existed. It exists in North America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, you have to pay. Yeah, I know most of you guys can. Some of you can't. If you're under 25, you have to pay like an extra fee to rent a U-Haul. Which I know, because I had to move several times. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> but yeah, he was, he was a high priest. He was highly intelligent. In fact... In the anime, he has the highest test scores of anyone in ancient Egypt at the time. He is very, very intelligent. He uh, was a nerd. Pretty much, he was a nerd, as always. It makes total sense. He is, uh, you know... <laughs> he, but he has an intense sense of justice in a ruthless way. In a ruthless way. He definitely didn't do common core math. If, if you... if that's... What we're alluding to. He definitely... Did not learn math through Common Core. Let's put it that way. That's how smart he was. Uh... Uh... He is... Still insane. Don't get me wrong. He was a good guy. But only barely. <laughs> only... Only barely. Yeah, yeah. He... He scored the highest score ever scored on the ancient Egyptian SATs. Exactly. And earned him a spot at the Pharaoh's court. I don't know why he's a priest? Wouldn't you be like an ancient Egyptian tactician? At that point? But he was a priest. I guess. I don't know what's the meaning of that, but I guess... It makes sense because priests hold a lot of power in ancient Egyptian times. He was always ruthless. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He, he gets a cool hat. Exactly. He gets a cool hat. And he's been saved from having terrible hair. Like the pharaoh. So. He really won from the start. I mean, he has a blue eyes white jet later on in another life. So any argument that he's uncool is truly invalid. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> on a day out in the town saves a slave woman with white hair and blue eyes. She was getting stoned on the streets of ancient Egypt. And uh, he saved her. Her name was Kisar. So I didn't include it in this explanation because I wanted to talk a little bit about her. But uh, Pri Sato and Kisar actually met as kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's... it's <laughs> yeah, a female! <laughs> exactly! Yeah, so uh, she's very, she's very pretty. She's very pretty. I know Dragon Wife, very, very cute. But uh, they actually met when they were kids. So Pri Seto, when he was a kid, he was a uh, part of another village, not the capital. Um, and he came across like a band of merchants, and in one of these cage sort of caravans. She, they saw, he saw that the merchants or bandits had uh, enslaved a girl. So Kisara when she was a child. So he was kind of like enraptured by her and let her out. He freed her, right? But then the bandits got mad and burned down his village. To which Kisara unleashed the power within her to protect him. So, he has forgotten this at this point, that they've already met previous. Their fates are already entwined from that moment. Uh, but she kind of 
he kind of promised that he would repay her one day. He completely forgot about that promise because he's an asshole. But he ends up being true to his word anyways by saving her from the streets. But... Yeah, it's kind of like a Witcher contract, a little bit. Yeah, they're kind of star-crossed, right? <laughs> faithful Trudy Wife, Faithful Trudy Wife. He's, he is rude, I don't care. He is rude to everyone, okay? But her soul was entwined with the Blue Eyes White Dragon. In here, from the original manga, um, a old sage in the court of Atem, um, Tell Seto at this point that this girl harbors a god inside of her and the god is blue eyes white dragon now In order to truly understand this concept Yeah, he was so rude. He was always rude. He was never polite The only person he was ever polite to is his little brother Which I'm not gonna get into but he, he's kind of a bro con too. He's a bro con scaly Is he even can we even fix him? Can we even fix him, chat? I don't think we can! <laughs> I don't think we can fix Kaiba! I don't think anyone has tried! The only person who could have fixed him, Kisara, and what you're learning about right now, you'll see what happens to her. But! In order to understand this concept of her soul being entwined with the blue eyes, we gotta understand some ancient Egyptian mythology. So! In ancient Egyptian mythology, guys, the question, does he need fixing? He's perfect the way he is! <laughs> the original Sigma Chad. <laughs> the Sage is Mokuba. I don't think the Sage is Mokuba. He looks more like... Uh, I, I don't think the Sage is Mokuba. No, 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 no. But... Yes, we are nerding out today. Yes. But you're watching a VTuber, so... Who are you to judge? Anyways, moving on. Moving on. Well, I love you all. We're all nerds here. It's okay. There's no shame. There is no shame. Anyway, so... Moving on. So let's understand a little bit about ancient Egyptian mythology. So in ancient Egyptian mythology, or at least in Yu-Gi-Oh! Each person has a Ba... And a Ka. What do these words mean? Well... Your Ba... Is uh, a part of your personality is like the soul uh, that makes up like your personality here in this realm. So it's like it's like a part of your soul that is separate from the other part that is connected to uh, like your not, almost not baser but your. Your instincts that are connected to a greater power, right? Right? Yeah, like ego and ID, kind of like that. So they're separate in most people, in most people. So what Sato does in the manga, right? I know, it sounds like Baka. I know, sh 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 just be quiet, just be quiet. That's not what I meant to do. But anyways, so everyone has like this like hidden power inside of them, basically, called the Ka. And usually, for most people, it's separated. So, basically, what Priest Sato does is whenever there is a criminal in the court of Atem, he would judge them. And what he would do is he would remove their Ka, their, like, special yeah, power you. within them that makes them evil. He'll harness that power and leave the person with their Ba. So that person will have the evil taken out of them at that point. So that's what... That's Kaiba did, and usually the person lives. The person lives, right? But with Kisara, her soul, her ba and her ka cannot be separated. They're kind of too intertwined. One, they cannot exist both at the same time if one is taken out. Yeah. Usually, you know how Kaiba is, right? Yeah. She. she <laughs> I'm sorry if this is so trudy. I'm sorry. I know way too much about this show. I read the manga. I watched the Japanese version. I watched the English version. I read trivia. I know way too much about this. Okay. I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing what I know. Thank you for the five dollar show. Ah, Super Nail King. Wait, no more ka. He's turning them into sheep. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. I read the manga. I did. I forgot a lot of it. I want to read it again. The art was incredible. So I want to read it again. Everyone looks so great in the manga. Yeah. I also read 
Uh, the original. You know, before Duel Monsters was a thing, there was, uh... It was supposed to be a horror manga. So I even read the original iteration of Yu-Gi-Oh! Before it was Duel Monsters. Uh, I also watched that anime too. And did you know that Yami Yugi in that show was voiced by the same person who voices Yukito in, uh, in, in Card Cat for Sakura and Shinji Ikari. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Zero! I love that. I love that show. He actually killed people, by the way. No way! Now you guys know! Now you guys know! Yeah! I, I wish they read me. Yeah, Kaiba had green hair, too. Exactly. He was a broccoli man. Yeah. It was supposed to be a horror show, but the Duel Monsters part took off. So... Get in the duel, Yugi! Yami Yugi was my... He was, he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it was real shadow games and Yami Yugi killed people. And there was that. Anyways. So. Now that we understand the bot and the ka, let's move on. So Seto took her home. Pre Seto took her home. You know. And took care of her. Originally intending to kill her. <laughs> and extract her power. <laughs> so. You can see, he didn't really have the purest of intentions like taking this girl home. Uh, I know, I know, right? Because he, he knows that she cannot live without her ka. Right? So here on this panel, I'll try to read it in a Kaiba-like voice. I cannot, I cannot do Kaiba's voice, but I can try. Lady of the White Dragon, how much pain must color your blue eyes before the dragon is released to the heavens? I will make the white dragon my servant, no matter what. Even if I must sacrifice the life of the wielder. So yeah, he needs more power. He's considering killing her at this point. Look at his face. <laughs> he's very, he's very sussy. Yeah, so... He was no simp at this, at this time. He has not started simping yet, guys. He has not started simping yet. He is still a Sigma male who need no whamming at this point, okay? Still an edgelord, okay? That is... That is what it is. Mm -hmm. I like how people in chat are making fun of me for sounding... like a millennial. Do you guys think that Zoomers know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Considered that for a bit. We're all Yugi Boomers now. We're all Yugi Boomers now, chat. We're all Yugi Boomers now. Okay? Don't come at me with that. All right. Look at the mirror before coming for me. All right? Exactly. Exactly. Consider that. If I'm turning to dust, so are you. Moving on! <laughs> we'll all become Yu-Gi-Oh! dust together and be scattered to the oceans by the hands of none other than Weevil. <laughs> Say goodbye to your youth, Yugi. <laughs> Drink some water, hold on. Say goodbye to your butter cookies, Sheena. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, originally he wanted to extract her power and kill her. Okay, that's what he wanted to do. But in the end, of course, he fell in love. He fell in love and he realized in this panel here, he says, Forgive me, Kisara. The truth is, I never wanted to let you go. I wanted to imprison you in the jail of my heart. <laughs> Kaiba! <laughs> you would have been the one to point. You would have been the one point in the light of light. In a soul consumed by darkness. Not, 
I wanted your light, Kisara. No, not your spirit, Ka. Not your dragon. I wanted your light, Kisara. I wanted you. <laughs> Kaiba, very romantic. He went into full like my lady. My lady tips fedora mode. Um, you know. <laughs> He's so shooty. He's parched. I know. I know. I know. But he fell in love. He fell in love. This is the one time Kaiba fell in love, and in an interview with uh with Kazuki Takahashi. The creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, who rest his soul, rest his soul, he has left us. But in an older interview with him, in in a I know R.I.P. Really unfortunate for those of you who do not know, Takahashi Sensei died a hero. He tried to save some people from drowning, and ended up drowning himself. Uh, only a couple years ago. So, uh, miss his art every day. His art is was incredible absolutely incredible and you know i will miss seeing it i will miss seeing it yeah anyways anyways a great man yeah he he died trying to save people from drowning only a couple of years ago he died a hero's death all right he, he is now in the halls of valhalla you know he 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 died a chad so rest his soul um was he involved beyond the original series? I think he departed the series after... Card games on motorcycles. Yeah, so after... After... After the whole... Card games on motorcycles arc, he left the series. Yeah, 5Ds. 5Ds. Mm, exactly. Um... Yeah, so... Mm -mm -mm. That's why... That's why the new Yu-Gi-Oh's don't really interest me. I've only watched until 5Ds and then I just... I left it. I left this. I left the anime after that because it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. So so he fell in love. He didn't. He no longer wanted just a dragon. He wanted her. He was in love. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was about to say. So Kazuki Takahashi, in an interview, said that uh, due to you know how Shonen Jump is. Uh, Shonen Jump is a very rigorous job like there's crazy deadlines of course every week a new one comes out so he wasn't able to fully flesh out the relationship ever but he has said that originally there was would have had ah, would have been more of a plot about this couple they were meant to fall in love and you were meant to like learn more about them as time went on and just see how deep their relationship was but sadly we never got to see how deep their cute dates and how deep they were in love uh, Which is something I will always regret And this is the one pairing that sometimes I will scour the internet For new fan fictions of like every couple years Because I would have loved to see them together I think, I think I just It's something I'll never get to see and that is really sad And the original creator is gone so you know, this is something that I think I will forever yearn in my heart Unless something comes out that he's written before But yeah, they're the best couple, I really really like them Yeah, yeah, we guess, I guess we have to use our imaginations, you know? <laughs> yeah, mm -mm -mm. I do not self-insert, I do not self-insert That is not what I do <laughs> But thank you very much Kaiba, if you think about Kaiba, he kind of behaves like one of those ruthless CEOs in Korean manhwas Like Korean web webcomics Literally every single ruthless CEO character is basically just Seto Kaiba If you think about it, right? I guess Cor I, I think the Korean girls who are Yume Joes really like Kaiba I think I have to I have to ask Ivy for a confirmation, but it is what it is. Mm, I think I would like them more if they were actually Seto Kaiba. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Well, Kaiba had the K-pop hair before K-pop was cool. <laughs> Kaiba had the K-pop boy boy band look before it was cool, guys. Yeah, he was a true trendsetter, truly. 
Ya. <laughs> so, ultimately, Kisar dies protecting Seto through... It was a coup that was planned by Seto's father. Because Seto's father wanted... Uh, wanted Seto, pre-Seto, to be on the throne. Um, and he planned a coup against the pharaoh. Uh, but Seto is loyal to the pharaoh. Uh, eventually, in the final battle... Uh, uh, in this skirmish... Kisara gives her life to protect Seto. Yeah, so she protects him... And she dies. And because... Uh... Yeah, basically, that's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. Um, so only, only the blue eyes, the soul of the blue eyes was left behind. Yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's very sad. So on this panel, it says... Kisara. The light which destroyed the evil god cannot... The light which destroyed the evil god cannot reach my heart. For me, the world will never truly be bright again. <laughs> A better love story than Twilight. Exactly, exactly. He's so deep. I know. Uh, <laughs> My heart will never truly be bright ever again. You are the only light on my soul. Yeah, he was he was terminal simp at this point. All right, he wanted he wanted his white dragon mommy, and his white mom white dragon mommy loved him. Okay. <laughs> He's loyal, though. He's loyal. He's loyal. So again, to reiterate... When we say that the Blue-Eyes White Dragon is Kaiba's waifu... It really is! <laughs> it really is! It really is! That's why, in one of the first episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Do you remember this? He goes to... Yugi's grandpa originally had the fourth Blue Eyes White Dragon because there was only four ever printed. He goes there and rips it up in front of Yugi's grandpa because he will not let anyone else have her. So even though his new reiteration, his new reincarnation does not remember Kisara, his soul does. <laughs> His soul does, so that's why he will not let anybody else have her. That's his waifu, okay? There can only be one! There can only be one! <laughs> his soul burns for her! <laughs> yeah, he basically will get jealous. Nobody else can touch his waifu. Yeah. Um, no, he's not into NTR. We know that Kaiba is not into NTR. So he would go this far. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. He sacrificed God for his wife. He did. I, I remember that. <laughs> there was one scene in the anime where he remembers, like... He gets, like, memories from his past life about Kisara. And he's like, What are you trying to tell me, blue eyes? And then he gets, like, flashbacks to Kisara. He's like, I understand. I sacrifice. Obelisk, the Tormentor! And one other card I don't remember! And then the opponent, opponent Ishizu was like, You are sacrificing God! <laughs> you can't sacrifice God! And he's like, oh, I summon Blue Eyes White Dragon! <laughs> I'll even sacrifice God for his waifu! It's so great! That's right! <laughs> It was an epic moment, so he would even sacrifice God for her. So Chuni, I know, so Chuni. Do you love your waifu like that? My question. He he is husband no material. I think I think out of all the uh of male uh, the 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 male characters in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, he is definitely. The one that makes the most hearts go doki, doki, because he's the kind of, you know, uh, guy that would only be loyal to you. <laughs> yeah, he would, he would, he has money, 
he would only be loyal to you, protect you with... He would sacrifice God for you. I don't know if there's anybody that romantic, you know? The tr <laughs> I can see why. I can see why girls simp for him. Um, I went from being a Yami Yugi simp to a Kaiba simp in my later years. Uh... Yeah, he's perfect. You don't need to fix him. I think I think we have we have already come to that conclusion, guys. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, also he's just 14 when the series started, but he does not look like a 14-year-old. But anyways, he has the Kuro Boss syndrome, you know? He's a scaly. He's a ooh, ooh scaly. Oh, dragon mommy, please. <laughs> He was just 14 in the anime when the anime started. Exactly. Exactly. He has the Kuroko no Basuke syndrome. I know. The only one that looks actually 14 is Yugi. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened there. But it is what it is. I know. Yeah, he's a CEO at 14 years old. What were you doing at 14? I was playing Pokemon. <laughs> Let me drink water. Hold on. So yes, he's a scaly, he has a wife, leave him alone, leave him alone. So now, <clears throat> I don't want to say, <laughs> yeah, Kuroko no Basuke syndrome. I can't even say I was doing my best at 14, honestly say. <laughs> what were you doing at 14? I was definitely not doing my best, let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. I think at 14 is when I dropped the, uh, I dropped or I was about to drop violin. I think I dropped violin officially at like six, 16, 15, 16. So yeah, I was not doing my best. Mm. Anyways, thank you. Thank you for liking my cosplay. Mm, thank you, cookie boy. I appreciate it. Anyways. <clears throat> Next section. That's done with the blue eyes. Let's go to the next section. The, the pot of greed. Uh, this is actually the longest portion of this, of this, uh, presentation because the lore behind this guys are also intertwined with another creature called the Upstart Goblin, if you guys don't know, and he has a very long... But first, we need to answer one question. What? does it do chat every day what does it do nobody knows what it does it's such a complicated card i know it's such a complicated game there's no way you guys will understand from the get-go but have no fear butter cookies have no fear because i have got just a thing for you all right instead of me telling you why not look at the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Cut to every single time the Pot of Greed is activated. How about that? Is Neil... Is Neil... Is Neil lagging my stream? I don't think... I think it's still... It's still going solid. I think it's still going good. Okay. We're good now. Neil. God damn it, Neil. Alright, so... It was lagging a bit. Okay, okay, we're good now. Yeah, or it's back. Good, okay. So, this is every time Pot of Greed is summoned. So, may let's watch this first. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll learn something, chat. Hold on. Mm. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 come on. No, 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 come on, come on, come on. Please play properly. No! Go back! No, no. But this is just the Why is it not working? Hold on. Oi! Oi. 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 No, 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 no. Why isn't it wor not working? No, 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 no. Please play. Play! Dear God, uh... <laughs> Do I just... Eh? Not that. Hold on. 
No, no, it just goes to another thing. Why can't things just work? What I need them to. It worked last time. Oi, Omara. Please. Mm, it's too much power. Maybe it was too powerful. Maybe. Maybe that is the reason. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to have to open it in a new window. No problem, no problem. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Uh, ruining the flow. Ruining the flow How do we of escape? my freaking presentation. How dare they. How dare they? It cannot be. Mm, cookie boy, you're going to have to give me a second. Um... There it is. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. No problem. We can overcome this obstacle with a little bit of finesse, which we have, obviously. Okay. <clears throat> the heat if you don't have an air conditioner. Uh, this skip, only takes skip. five minutes. Skip. But this is just the beginning. All thanks to my magic card. I activate Pot of Green! This card allows me to draw two new cards. Green is good. Green is good! I magic card, <laughs> Pot of Green. It allows me to draw two cards from my deck. Now I'll draw. The magic card, Pot of Greed. Thanks to this card, I can now draw two <laughs> Green cards is good. Deck, I'll play this, my Pot of Greed. A magic card that allows <laughs> but me what to draw does it two do? more cards from my deck. I play my Pot of Greed card. <laughs> huh, I bet you wish you'd drawn this card, don't you, Joseph? <laughs> now, I'm able to draw two new cards. I think my luck is beginning to change now. <laughs> All yes! right! Pot of Greed lets me draw two cards. First, I'll activate my Pot of Greed card. This allows me to draw two more cards. Now I play the magic card, Pot of Greed, allowing me to draw two more cards. We still don't get it! I Tell us what it does! Pot of Greed. It allows me to draw two new cards to refresh my hand. I still don't I get it, chat. The magic card, oh, I still don't get it, Kyle it boy. To draw two more cards. What does it do? Now I activate Pot of Green, <laughs> which lets me draw two cards. My Pot of Green, it lets me draw two cards. Pot of Green it lets it me again? draw two cards from my deck. Next, I activate the magic card, <laughs> Pot of Green! Pot of Green! Now I can draw two more two cards! Two more cards! Now, I activate Wait. my Pot of Green Wait, what magic does it do, card, so I can draw two cards! <laughs> then I'll activate my Pot of Green! This lets me draw two cards! <laughs> First, I'll play my Pot of wow. Green magic card! Wow, Yu-Gi-Oh! It's such a complicated game! Twice. No I'll wonder why kids are not playing it these days! This lets me draw two more cards. <laughs> First, I'll play a magic card known as Pot of Green. Pot so of Green! I, two cards. I can't remember. I Impossible. Pot of Green. Oh. You know what that means, don't you? I can draw two additional draw cards. Draw two from additional my cards deck. from my deck. My Pot of Green <laughs> magic card. Now I can draw two more cards from my deck. I still don't understand, but First, what does I it do? I don't understand. Pot of Green magic card. That lets me draw How two many? more cards. I activate the magic card, Pot of Green! <laughs> that lets me draw two cards from my deck! Also, also, oh. that French accent is atrocious. Hire me instead! I will be your Frenchman in the dude. Hire me! Hire me! Whoever is doing this, I can make the French accent better! I can voice all the French women characters for... For, uh, for kids. Oui, oui, très bien. All right, let's, let's go. I'll start with this. But what does it do? Card, of green. This allows me to draw two my more cards from card my deck. <gasps> What do you know? What do you it's know? It's the same card you drew. Pot of Some Green. Some might call that a coincidence, <laughs> but I call it fate. And thanks to Pot of Greed, I can draw two cards. <laughs> I'll begin my turn by activating the map. <laughs> that was the funniest one. <laughs> Yuki goes, Yuki goes, ah, oh, 
I, I play Pot of Greed, which lets me draw two cards from my deck. And the guy goes, what do you know? I drew the same card. And this card lets me draw two cards from my deck. <laughs> but what does it do? That allows me to draw <laughs> two more cards from my deck. <laughs> now, I'll start by activating the magic card Pot of Green, which lets me draw two more cards from my uh, deck. But I'm not done yet. Next, I play Pot of Green. Pot of Green! This allows me to take two cards from my deck and, and add, add them, them to, to my, my hand. hand. I'll start by activating Pot of Green. And you know what that means. I get to draw two new cards. No, I don't, Yugi. What does it mean? <laughs> But what does it do? I think I think we're still confused because if I cross check it with the next video, right? If I cross check it with the next video, just give me a second. Give me a second for the next video. Um, <clears throat> hold on. Uh, 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 why are all my windows messed up? No! no, no, stop, stop. Okay, hold on, hold on. I need to. Summon oh my, my next. God. I need to summon my next video, which is the oh, I summon pot of green in VR chat. This is the oh, this is the infamous, the infamous meme. Hold on, <clears throat> how do I? No, go go it's back to the video. I must. Oh my god! Uh, oh, this one works. Hold on, hold on. This one works. This one works. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Rishi, but King of Toasters! Oh man, Pot of Greed really complicated. I can see why they always had to explain what it does or else I would have never remembered. I know, right? So kind of them to explain every single time it's summoned. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on, hold on. Alright, <clears throat> here we go. I summon what Pot of Greed to draw seven. three additional cards from my deck! Three?! That's not what it does. Roll my dice! <laughs> that is what it does. Pot of Greed! Draw three. I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional <laughs> oh cards from my deck. And I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional <laughs> cards from my deck. Then I play Magic Force, <laughs> which allows me to play Pot of Greed once again to draw three additional cards from my deck. You know, he's right. And I attack and I win, right? No. You don't have any. Well, you don't have any monsters and. Oh, monsters... he's supposed to be here. Uh... <laughs> what? Oh, you got the Celtic God. <laughs> My, My turn! turn. I summon Dark Magi I... Magician! Dark I also magician. summon Jack's Knight! <laughs> what? How? You can't what summon you a doing? bunch of cards on one turn. <laughs> you, can't, you can only normal summon one monster per turn, too. And he's just going crazy. <laughs> His pot of greed or my dual disc and resummoned it over and over. Thank you for the five dollars you buy, Reiner. Thank you. <clears throat> Aaron, it's against the rules. You never saw this coming. I summoned <laughs> pot of greed to drop three additional <laughs> cards from my deck. That's what? not what it does. It doesn't that do is that. what it does. <laughs> it doesn't, I that's, what, that's what it do, <laughs> Yugi. <laughs> that does what it do. Does what it do? <laughs> it's, it does what it do. There's the answer. <laughs> That's the answer, guys. It it does what it do. <laughs> Anyways, finally, finally, we understand, right? Thank you very much. It's a net go. Iris last brain cell. Oh, I summon pot of greed and face up attack position. You can't. So, it, this video is kind of fun because because first of all, the first funny point is that he keeps taking pot of greed, the same pot of greed, taking it off his dual disc, keeps summoning that thing, that pot of greed. Then he called the mirror force, magic force. <laughs> and he gave the wrong ruling. Because Pot of Greed only... Pot of Greed allows you 
just uh, draw two cards from your deck. But he said three, right? <laughs> and he summoned multiple monsters in normal summon in the same turn. So <laughs> Mirror Force doesn't do that. <laughs> it does what it do. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, so it's like a screw the rules, I have money moment. You know, that's why it's so funny. For those of you who do not know. But thank you, thank you. I love I love this video. It is a classic. It is a classic. But moving on! So what does it do? It gives you a plus two. Oh, I summon Pot of Greed, which allows us to draw two cards. But did you guys know? Did you guys know, Cookie Boys? That that was yeah, not the original it. ruling? Hmm... Did you guys know? Thank you, Richie! Don't rush too far! Ryan Glasner! I summon S. Super Chat of Green, which allows me to summon two dollars! <laughs> Wait, how many times can I chain that? How many two dollars can I summon? At this point. No, 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 no. Technical... No, it's... It's... It's plus two. It's plus two. It was not! Hmm, Yugi boy, I guess I'm supposed to school you now, hmm? The original ruling on the original card from 1999 on the very first print in the OCG says... For Goyoku Natsubo, I will, I will demonstrate my Nihongo Jozu, because I can read it. Yomeru! It says... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Leans in. Jibun <laughs> no... Deki ka... Deki kara... Kado wo... Nimai hiku... Hita... Ato de... Hita ato de... Goyoku... Na tsubo wo... Hakai suru... Yomeru! I can read it! <laughs> Do you guys know what it does? <laughs> what it do? What it do? Any Nihongo Jozu people know? What does it do? I will tell you what it does! <laughs> From your deck! Draw two cards! Destroy the pot of greed afterwards! There we go! There we go! That's what it says! That's what that means! <laughs> I'm not lying! Any, any JPs in my chat? Any JPs in my chat? No! No one! No one! Somebody please tell me my Nihongo Drozu! I live off of that! I live off of that. Mm. <laughs> That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nihongo. Shouzu. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <clears throat> okay. 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 What does it do? <laughs> No, you're not supposed to rip the card in half after you're done. But that's the original ruling. Very complicated, right? Japan isn't real in <laughs> What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Nihongo Jozu, arigato. Alright, alright. Moving on. It is very powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh! And like, let's get into like the nitty-gritty on why this is like so powerful, right? Uh, unlike, unlike, for those of you who play Magic, uh, The Gathering, there is no casting call, uh, casting cost mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! Which means, you know, if you, even if you play, like, uh, Pokemon cards, you have to have enough energies, or in, in Magic, you have to have mana to cast an attack, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! does not have that. You can play as many spell and trap cards and they can be chained together endlessly. So you can play many and it doesn't cost anything. And with that, you can get like endless plus two pretty much, right? It a card, it's a very powerful card advantage 
It's very unfair. So if you get first turn, you get Platic Greed. It's kind of guaranteed you'd win. It's a big Wombo combo. It's just too powerful at that point. Yeah. Which is why. And uh, another big reason is that it gives you a deck advantage because technically it'll reduce your deck size down from 40 to 37. So by three. Meaning, Pot of Greed is not counted as a card in your deck it, by itself because you could just play it and draw two more cards, which reduces the card deck size by three, right? So, exactly. So because of these things, because of these things, at first, the first ever World Championship in 2003, um, it was placed on the limited ban list. So, which means uh, usually when a card has a limited ban, you can have only a certain amount in your deck. Sometimes one, two, Depending, but yeah, you can only have one is a limited ban, but by the time it was 2005 It was forbidden and it has been on the forbidden ban list Since 2005 it has not seen the light of day because it was too powerful Yeah, it's never so you don't really see this card being played ever because it just breaks the game free him <laughs> It's an axe for what it is for uh, for this many years for 18 years, it's been rotting in jail. Yeah, exactly. That's the reason. Free him! <laughs> they freed Maxi, to be to be fair. So I kind of I kind of wanna I kind of want them to get a little funny, and for one for one format, just let him free. Maybe for like their 20th year anniversary, just let him free for one format and see the disaster it'll. <laughs> It'll cause like just free just free him from one format. I swear. <laughs> I want to see what people do. I want to see what people do. Konami. Oh my god. Mm. Yeah, Maxi is so bad in TCG. It's true. It's true. It's just like a master duel meta sort of thing. Yeah. 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 There. Uh. There. I don't know. No, but the the TCG. It will be two more years until the 20th anniversary of, like, Pot of Greed being banned, you know? He turns 20 in the jail cell. <laughs> Very soon. Mm. Yeah. Did they bring Monster Reborn back? Yomi Gaido, really? Nobody plays it, though. <laughs> Thank you, Super Nail King, for $2 dollars ah! What about the other sins, Pot of Sloth? We're only gonna talk about the Pot of Greed and maybe Pot of Duality. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, more trivia about a pot of greed. Spirits inhabit the pot of greed. He is not empty. There are spirits inside of him. One of which is depicted in this card in the spirit of pot of greed. Uh, he is. He was an angel who visits the pot from time to time. That does not look like an angel to me. I. I is that a biblically accurate angel? I have no idea, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I I hope angels don't look like that. It looks like my uh, sleep paralysis demon. I know, but in the official lore book, they say that is an angel. I guess he's biblically accurate. It's nightmare fuel. I know, I know, I know. Uh, did you know that the pot of greed is actually a baby? Because when he grows up, in which he can grow up, his adult form is the avatar of the pot. So basically, Pot of Greed is just a little guy. And then he grows up into Avatar of the Pot. Yeah, I, I didn't know. He was just in his larval stage. You know, I didn't know he had like a life cycle like that. I thought he was just a pot. But this man grows and gets really buff. <laughs> so, so yeah. He never skip, skips leg day. I know, he's natty. Absolutely. Oh no, he's hot! <laughs> Make sure you don't skip leg day, guys. Look at those thighs. Look at those thighs. Don't tell Tenma. <laughs> he is quite macho. He is quite the macho man. Yeah, puberty hit pretty hard. I, I agree. Mm. He can definitely crush some melons with those thighs. 
Definitely, he's a word. He's part of games. <laughs> You're right. Oh my god. <laughs> he it should be part of games. You're right. Uh, he suck good. I don't know how else to uh, write that. <laughs> so, so basically. Not only can he suck through the top of his head where the normal jar opening is, right? He can also suck through each of his nostrils. Okay? Remember what Pot of Greed does? Draw two cards. There's two nostrils. Come to your own conclusions. <laughs> Thank you for the five dollars to It's that good person. I hope that you go over the story that is shown in Mistake and stuff where it makes fun of the band cards. Uh, I don't think I have that here. I don't have that here. Mm. Thank you so much for the five dollars to Hoppy. Thank you. Furry is much more accurate if you know how scary a lot of culturally accurate fate are. Yeah, I, I do. I do know. I do know that. I do know about that. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, draw two cards. One for each nostril. That is my, uh, theory. You know, so remember, he can suck through the top. He can suck through his nose as well. Mm -mm -mm. And here you guys can see Upstart Goblin right here. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about him in a little bit because their lore is quite interconnected. But what does he do? He suck good. <laughs> What does he do, chat? He do what he does! <laughs> That's what it do! <laughs> he suck good! He sucks two cards through his nostrils and ends his turn. Yeah. They don't like that, but it, it do what it do, guys. It do what it do. He suck good. Yeah. That's what it do. It do what it does. Right? He has a diabolical side, and he oftentimes backfires. So every time people like put their hand in the jar of greed or pot of greed, it can explode. It can explode. So, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is the gift of greed. And I don't really... I don't really see this used very often, but there's one video that I came across in which somebody... did the nastiest OTK I've ever seen in my life. One turn kill using gift of greed. What does he do? What does he do, chat? I will read it for you. Your opponent draws two cards. Why would you want your opponent to draw two cards? Oh! Oh, Yugi boy! Why deck milling, of course? Annoying deck milling. Yes! So, yeah, you can deck out someone using this card in the right combo. And you can get the nastiest win. And I have an example for you today, actually, uh, regarding how to win using this. Though I'm not sure how viable it is today, because I'm not too updated on the ban list right now. But let me show you a nasty play. Uh, hold on. This is so evil. This is the most diabolical play I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of diabolical plays, right? So let me make sure it's all set for you. I will narrate it as we go. So as we see, he has three... Gifts of Greed. He's playing Trick Stars as an engine. So he has Trick Star Reincarnation that helps recycle things. So, so Trick Star Reanimation... Uh, Reincarnation right here... Is basically a way to recycle the cards that he puts in his graveyard, right? Uh, Cup of Ace, I forgot, I forgot what he does. Uh, but, yeah, 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 a Trick Star Mill, I know, I know, I know. It's so dirty, it's so dirty. And remember, what does Gift of Greed do, chat? What do he do? He'd suck good for the other person. Like, he makes the opponent draw two cards, all right? So, so let's take a look at, oh, oh, no, no, go back, go back, go back. Go back! No! Oh. 
Alright, alright, let's start over. Let's start over. <laughs> yes, spoilers. Alright. Alright! Let's go. Oh, it's a coin toss. I see, I see. Okay, so he gets a coin toss with Cup of Ace. He gets two more cards. He gets plus two. He plays Trickstar Light Stage. Which allows him to draw a specific card to his hand. He'll play another Cup of Ace. He gets Tails, so the other opponent draws two cards. He'll play Trickstar Camilla. Activate Camilla's special effect in order to draw out another Trickstar Reincarnation, which is that recycling card. Then he'll place his first Gift of Greed onto the field. And, oh, he'll put, he'll put all of them onto the field. All right, perfect. Then he'll play... Tr uh, yeah, he'll set Trickstar Reincarnation. Then what he'll do... He'll end the turn. And so now he drew a card. Now he can activate all his traps and chain everything together. So he's gonna chain all of his Gifts of Greed together. All at once. There we are. So they're all going to resolve right here. And he's gonna draw all of those cards. Nice. Then you're gonna activate his Trickstar Reincarnation, which allows him, or both of them, and you can chain them together. Here. Nice. And then now... Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> It'll force you to draw all your cards. And that is the dirtiest OTK I have ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. So... <laughs> And it's gone! You know, it's it's a bit of chance uh, with Cup of Ace, but if you get the right amount of cards, that is the dirty, the filthiest OTK you will ever see in your life. What a troll. What an absolute legend, you know? <laughs> Very, very dirty. Yeah. Good thing. Is it? It hasn't been banned? Yeah, it must have been. There's no way. There's no way. Any hand cap stop this. I see, I see. Mm. I don't know if this card's been banned, to be fair. I don't know. I'm not, like, up to date. Hold on. Um... Let me see... Alrighty... Alright! Yeah, also, incredibly, it's, like, by chance that you get the right hand, right? Alright. That was awesome, I know. The power of Plot of Greed. I had to demonstrate it for you. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we, we did mi we did witness a murder, a very dirty murder. The nastiest, the filthiest win I've ever seen in my life. So, um <laughs> Since it has almost always been banned, it was referenced in mistaken arrest. So right here, if you guys see, right here is the pot of greed. You can see that uh I forgot what this creature was called, but these are all banned cards. Like, this is a... Uh, change... A uh, Kokoro Gawari. Right? Or, no, this is... Waboku? I forgot, I forgot. Sangin! Sangin, yeah. He's being arrested for being in possession of all these banned cards. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, a graceful... Cha graceful charity! Graceful charity! Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Graceful charity. Um... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Graceful charity, Sangin. There's some other... Yeah, there's just... Some band cards in here together. Yeah, delinquent duo, exactly. And they're all getting arrested for being in possession of an illegal item. That is Pot of Greed. Very cute, very cute. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So, in order to understand more about Pot of Greed and what he do... <laughs> so, what have we learned so far? What have we learned so far? Before we get to Upstart Goblin and the continuation of this uh, pot of greed. We learned that he draw two cards, he do what he do, and he suck good. <laughs> <laughs> Milling is fun, I know. Gre greed is good, greed is good, exactly. What do he do what he do? He suck good, exactly, exactly. He explodes sometimes, all right. So let's get to the upstart goblin, cause their, their lure is Inch, like really linked and it's uh, quite a ride. So this is story of an entrepreneur. This is a story of capitalism. Yes, 
Yes. This is... <laughs> This is a true story of capitalism. I want you to keep that in mind as we go through this. Remember, greed is good. So upstart goblin, our man right here. I know he looks like a UB. I know he looks like a UB. But he's a goblin who became nouveau riche during the bubble economy through real estate and stock. So uh, you guys know what a bubble economy is. It's when... Everything's a little inflated and everyone's doing a little too well. You know, yeah, stocks are up, but it's inflated. It has to come down. Yeah, it's a little... Yeah, yeah. So basically, Japan in the 80s. That time was a very prosperous time, but as with any bubbles... As, uh, they got a burst at some point. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. He partied. Really, really hard. So apparently he throws big parties like the Gatsby parties. He throws around money like crazy. You know? He behaved very arrogantly as you see depicted here. Arrogantly giving pennies to this beggar. Now keep this image in your mind. Keep this image in your mind as we go forward. So he got, he got a little too arrogant. He got a little too... You know, the karma was building at the time. And as with any bubbles... As with any bubbles... They burst. So the economy crashes... In bubble crash. In this cart. And that left him deep in debt. He lost a lot of his riches. He's in despair. You know, as you guys can see here. <laughs> And he went into a slump because all his stocks crashed. So as you guys can see in this picture, pork belly stocks. He had stocks in pork bellies. They crashed. Soybeans crashed. Orange juice crashed. All his future stocks crashed. His copper stocks all crashed. And he went into a heavy slump. He was left destitute. Not almost not a penny to his name. And so, he became a beggar. Now! Yeah, he was too heavy into commodities. My boy went bankrupt. I know. Look, do you guys remember this picture? In second coin toss, how have the turntables? We have come almost full circle. Our boy became the beggar. Our boy became the beggar. See? <laughs> He became the beggar. Uh, so basically, it reminds you to, of your humility. Make sure not to let the money get to your head. He kind of deserved that though, right? The karma, the karma, he kind of deserved that. Yeah. So now there's rich nobles and he's picking up the pennies. Yeah. Karma is not a good woman. Let's put it that way. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not Kaiba. It's not Kaiba. It's another UB. It's UB on UB violence. You know, it's it's a true problem in in anime society. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So <laughs> it happens. I know, I know. So he turned to a life of crime in Goblin Thief. He is seen here stealing this jar of greed off from the back of a supply truck right here. And this card is actually featured in supply. So that guy right here in front, he's actually the supply card guy right here. And the jar of greed right here that he's stealing is this jar of greed. So very, very cute little tidbits of art in here. You never noticed that. Well, now you have. Really cute, right? A really cute connection. This is why this storyline is all like pretty much why I really, really love... I wanted to do this presentation because this timeline I really, really like. It's like a... How do you, how do you call it? Like one of those... Um, storybook... It's like a storybook situation. Very, very cute. There's cards that reference other cards. Very adorable. Yeah, he's going through an arc right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We will not talk about Madon today because... Because not a lot of people, unless you're uh, really into Yu-Gi-Oh! Will know about Madon. But if you guys like this presentation, like, leave a comment after it. And then, uh, tell me about some things you might want to learn. Maybe I'll do another presentation on those a little bit lesser known card timelines. Today is just like an appetizer. Uh, amuse-bouche, as you would say. Uh, to get you interested in non-fast food related content. Yes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it amuse bush. Yes, I'm being very fancy, very fancy. Yeah. So there's also this life of crime is also featured. Also featured in Jar Robber, where he steals a pot of greed from a store. Yeah, so he's a jar robber. He's a jar robber. There it is. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alba's l I'll look into it. But you gotta leave a comment though after this stream. Mm -mm -mm. You never got into Yu-Gi-Oh, but you've made me regret it. It seems really interesting. To be fair, not ev it's not everyone's cup of tea. You know, I know, I know. Like uh, Magic: The Gathering has a very interesting lore too, but I never really got into that. So. Mm -mm -mm. So, uh, this life, uh, he's also, if you look at Goblin Thief and Jar Robber, he robs, in this card, in Goblin D Thief, a jar of greed, which is in his left hand right here. He robs a pot of greed, which he holds in his right hand over here. So, isn't that cool? <laughs> isn't that cool? So these two cards connect to Goblin of Greed. These are very, very nice details. Very cute. Thank you so much for the $5 super! Ah, skeptical Panda! Thank you! It's relevant to my interest. I would like to subscribe to your newsletter. Thank you! Thank you for subscribing to my newsletter. Mm, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you for $5 super! Mm. Very. He never learned. He never learned. But let's, let's keep going. So... He would also steal these pots and try to sell his stolen goods for a profit. So do you guys remember this guy? The noble, he tried to sell the jar to the noble that he begged from in this one. So this is the same noble right here. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So he tried to sell his stolen goods for a profit, but as you guys can see here, he's really fallen on really hard times now. His clothes are in tatters. He is destitute, truly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. He is very bold. Repeated gimmick. Yeah, so he... he if you guys see here, right here. He specifically tried to sell to the rich guy in second coin toss. Who looks to be a noble of sorts. Very cool. <laughs> very cool. <clears throat> but then... Because our boy is so unlucky! It was faulty! As you guys can see, his handle fell off. His handle fell off the pot. And the rich guy demanded a refund. Right? And he's like sweating. He's sweating so hard because... He probably already spent the money. Poor guy, you know? Uh, and then eventually... He gets reported by this noble. <laughs> To the authorities! And he is being asked to pay a fine for trying to sell stolen goods. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know! I know, he got reported! He got reported, so he got... Um, over here, he's like trying to pay his fine. As you can see, he's offering like his pocket lint. Like this is all he has left. He's like, I can pay with this. To which... I know, Sky Skyrim moment! Basically, he got Skyrimmed, right? He got thrown in jail. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, the jars are missing teeth. I know, they're just faulty products. Probably because he took all the stuff out of them and then tried to sell the empty pot or something. I don't know, that is just my personal head cannon. But I'm not really sure exactly why they are all faulty and are missing a tooth. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, authorities refused his pocket lint, threw it all back at him, right? <laughs> In cash back, 
as you guys can see, it is the same dude right here. Right? And then these are... This is like literally all his pocket lint that he was holding right here. Very specific. You can actually pick out like specific things that he had in his hand. Yeah. Poor guy. Poor guy. But truly, he kind of deserved it for stealing. You know? Mm. I know. It does keep going. And... Because he couldn't pay the fine, our boy, right here, in royal prison, gets thrown in jail. He's right here on the right in royal prison. <laughs> He's in jail, have you guys noticed that? <laughs> A big oof, quality bars. I know, I know, right? Right? And you guys are shocked at the amount of continuity in these cards. Yeah? <laughs> poor guy, poor guy. I know, it's so good, right? It's so good! Yeah, he's in royal prison. He's right here, trying not to get noticed by you, but he's definitely there. <laughs> I'm really impressed with this. So, our guy eventually does get out of jail. You know, he does his time. He gets out, right? He <laughs> I know, it's so consistent too! I'm shocked! Yeah, there's a lot of Easter eggs like this. Royal oppression, that was it. <laughs> so... He gets out of prison and becomes a sweatshop factory worker. He wants to, like, get clean. Clean up his life, cl life clean up his act. So he gets a job in a factory... Producing Moki Mokis. <laughs> It goes really far! The rabbit hole goes very, very far! As you guys can see, he is on an assembly line. He looks like a C's candy grandma. <laughs> and Moki Moki is this card right here. Which says... I know, he's trying to redeem us. He's trying to like clean up his life, okay? Moki Moki is a, f a fairy type. A fairy normal monster. An outcast angel. Nobody knows what he is thinking at all. Sometimes he gets mad and that is dreadful. And uh, that description, it reminds me of someone, guys. It reminds me of someone familiar. It's a cute creature. It is a cute creature, but does this lore, does this card... Remind you of somebody? Here at face? An outcast angel. Nobody knows what he's thinking at all. Sometimes he gets mad and that is dreadful. It's Remy. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you got it! <laughs> it's Remy! It's Remy! <laughs> Our goblin tries to get clean by mass producing Remy's, you know? One for every Doremu. He's 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 doing an honest good job, okay? It works too well! <laughs> I know! She has the same Ahoge too! It's so cute! Mm. The only thing I'm worried about is uh the goblin's a little bit of a UB. So very dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. <laughs> ah, but anyways, anyways. Anyways. This clean life does not truly last. Because as you guys can see in Peking Goblin... Yeah? As you guys can see, in Peking Goblin, he's still in his uniform. His, like, seize candy uniform right here. Hold on. See? See right here? He's still in his uniform for the factory. He finds a pot of greed in the back room at the factory. Right here. And he steals it. He steals it. So he's back to a life of crime. I know, he can't stay clean, you know? He can't stay clean, he just couldn't resist it. He's too greedy. He's too greedy. Then he sells this pot of greed, an extra buck, to a goblin sell uh, buyer, right here, to pad his income. So that's the exact pot of greed that he was selling. He's still in his seize candy uniform. <laughs> Is this super crazy connected? <laughs> I know, old habits.
Hearts are hard to break. They die hard. For sure. I know! There's so many connections, right? Even the clothes... It's very, very consistent. Right? I know! It's a super chain! I know! This lore goes really deep! That's why... I, this is literally why I wanted to do this presentation. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. The plot thickens! Yeah, he's the greed grind set for sure. Mm -mm -mm. I want to deck with all these cards. I don't think they're viable now. Because you need like pot of greed for a lot of these. Meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile. Let's go back to the pot of greed, shall we? So meanwhile, the goblin's doing his thing, right? Somewhere else. Because there's multiple pots of greeds in the world. There's not just one, there's many. This is an item. A dream clown... <laughs> ...smashes another person's, a king, a noble's... ...pot of generosity... ...and pot of greed. He comes to smash these. Not, not, n not in the sussy way. Not zugzugging the pots. Even though, you know... ...the pots suck good. Don't do that. Bad cookie. Bad cookie. Don't do that. Uh, you can't just... You can't just do that. You can't just... You can't just do that, okay? Moving on! You can't just do that. Alright. No, he has a hammer! He's gonna smash the pots! Okay? And he smashes the pots and eventually... The noble repairs the pot of greed and pot of generosity and fuses it into one... ...into a pot of duality. So, the, uh, the clown here... ...Dream Clown is the reason... ...for the existence of the pot of duality, because he smashed... ...the pot of duality, and the pot of greed, and the noble... ...fixed it, to become... ...no, the pot of generosity, to become the pot of duality. Isn't that cute? There's lore to that, too! It's, it's so, it's so... ...intricate and... ...consistent. Yeah, very, very cute. Mm. Very, very cool, right? Yeah, a lot of you probably didn't catch that. There's like little lures and bits of trivia everywhere. Exactly. Mm -mm -mm. I hate pot of duality too. It's getting deep. I know. This is. I think this is still. This is still a limited card, so you can still play it. Mm. You can see. You still see it sometimes. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Later. <laughs> Later. Let's go back to our goblin now, alright? Let's go back to our goblin. We will keep the pot of duality in mind. Because the pot of duality... ...will come into the possession of our goblin later. But for now, let's go back to our goblin. Mm -hmm. Later. <laughs> in good goblin housekeeping. He's still a little bit destitute, but he starts a housekeeping business. He's like... Calculating the amount of money he could make, right? He's calculating his income and he needs more money. So he starts a gardening company. Like he becomes like a gardener that you would hire to take care of your weeds in your lawn, right? So he starts doing that. And gra that grass looks greener. He's out here. He sees a bunch of weeds. In this card, it features. <laughs> it's cancer! I know! It's cancer! It features nettles and sniffers. So he has to clean up these little buggers. I know, damn good card, annoying card. It's still played, you know? Literally, uh, lawn trash. He's, he's cleaning up all the lawn weeds and stuff, you know? Uh, despite, he works really hard, you know? This guy really wants to succeed. He's a true entrepreneur and criminal, but we will ignore that part of him for a second, right? Right? He has... Such bad pollen allergies. But he gardens and works hard. Despite... Despite this. <laughs> despite all this. He'll still do his best. Truly, truly a... Uh, entrepreneurial soul to look up to. He works so hard. He could just take some Claritin or something, but... Yeah, he needs Benadryl. <laughs> Relatable! Just eat some honey! But I don't think he can afford honey right now. Relatable! <laughs> Make sure... If you guys get pollen allergies, guys... What you guys can do, actually, is to, um... Get local honey from, like, a... A, uh... 
Like, it has to be local. Some local honey. Preferably raw. From your uh, local farmer's market. Consume a little bit of that every day. Real honey. Has to be real and local to your area. Uh, if you ingest a little every day, it'll improve your symptoms considerably. It is real. It is real. Bees are very good pharmacists. It is real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Lo raw local honey. Yeah, it'll help you. Trust me. Trust me. It'll really help you. Put it in your tea. It works. I know it sounds like... It sounds fake. It sounds like an old wives tale. I can guarantee you it works. I've helped many a friend. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can thank me later. <laughs> you can thank me later. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, put it on bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It works. It works. On top of that, his misfortunes, our goblin's misfortunes, do not end because at some point, sinister serpent, he encounters it in the tall grass, in waking the dragon. <laughs> some point. I didn't know Sinister Serpent was so small, but he apparently is very small. He's like a snake with wings. So he encounters it in the tall grass. So he does what he does best. He catches it like a Pokemon inside of a pot of greed somehow. Serpent somehow, and you can see he becomes like James and Carnivine. Yeah, <laughs> he becomes like James and Carnivine from Team Rocket. It causes him a lot of trouble. He comes out of his pot of greed a lot. Yeah, yeah, and gives him a lot of grief. And this card has a little bit more trivia. See, there's a pot of greed right here. Uh, the serpent came out of it. Gives him a lot of grief. There's an avatar in the back and the and the generosity too. The pot of generosity. But, <coughs> but, sorry, sorry. Take a closer look. I know, I know, our buff bro is back there too. He's so handsome. He's so handsome. No! This pot right here. This pot breaks on the right eye of the pot. As you guys can see, a shard came off of it. Very specifically. And guess what this is. Or left eye. His left eye. His left eye. Yeah, his left eye. This becomes the shard of greed. Very specifically. It's so specific that the cracks in this drawing are the exact place where the Shard of Greed came from. It's very specific. It fits like a puzzle. Very neat detail. I know, right? It's so cool. Yeah, really, really. Really, the lore goes so deep. I know, it was, it's so deep. You guys really didn't know this, huh? It's really interesting. Yeah, it's very fun. Like, in the art, there's these little Easter eggs that you just gotta, like, research a lot to catch. Um, but... It's so cute. It's so it's such a small detail, but somehow this specific incident inside of that other card was the reason why the shard of greed was created. Yeah, super cute. It's all connected. It's all connected. Mm -mm -mm. And then after that, he trades this broken pot. You guys can see it's broken. You guys can see where it's exactly it's cracked. He sells and trades this broken pot of greed for the pot of duality. Yeah, so... <laughs> so there it is. Our pot of duality has come into the possession of our greedy, greedy upstart goblin. Um, <laughs> yeah, and this pot is now pawned off. So what happens to it? What happens to the pot? The pot, this is not the last... What happened to the snake? He sold it. It's still in the pot, probably. I don't know what happens to the snake. I have no clue. That is a timeline. I'm not sure what happened there. They haven't... I haven't really found any card that Avery appears in that follows this timeline, right? I know. Maybe he died. I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah, broken pot of green. Yeah, see, it's broken right here, right here. There's a little black spot right here. You can tell it's the same one. This broken pot of green reappears later on in Jackpot 7. And you guys can tell that it's the correct one because it's the right, uh, the left eye that is broken. That shard is gone. He becomes a decorative piece for a slot machine. So it's the same pot of greed. <laughs> yeah, this pot is going places. He became a sexy uh, slot machine. Jackpot 7. Exactly. Mm -mm -mm. And so far, that is the story for Pot of Greed and Upstart Goblin. Their story is not over. So, I hope we can see more of his story as more cards are released. But that is the crazy timeline of Upstart Goblin and Pot of Greed. Did you guys learn something new today? Did you guys learn something new? That went really deep. That was a ride, right? That was a ride. <laughs> you missed a lot. You missed the what, like one of the craziest timelines. I know, I know. It was interesting, right? It was a time. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. You didn't know about the shard parts? Yeah, basically. I don't know if the, our goblin ever got rich again, but he's definitely not rich right now. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. You knew nothing of this. Now you know. Now you know. Mm. Yeah, now your brain grows a little bigger in a useless way, but you know. <laughs> I got a couple more shorter sections for you. I love the effort you put into the Sheena. Ah, oh, thank you. I love these high effort sort of Zatsu streams. Yeah, the old dramas for all of you GX fans. I had to cover this one. It's time to jazz it up with the old dramas. So they also have a little bit of a connecting lore. Uh, let me teach you some things about them. Yeah? <laughs> Chaz it up! Let's go! <laughs> uh, hold on, let me let me take a little water break. Still. Mm. Let me take a little water break. <clears throat> All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> the Ojamas. They are basically, what are they? They are annoying, scrunkly scrimbos. That's all, that's really all they are. They're just annoying little creatures. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ojama, the meaning of Ojama, the name, is from the Japanese phrase, Ojamashimasu. Ojamashimas, which is something you say when you go into somebody else's home. You basically say, "Oh, I'm about to intrude." Is the is the literal meaning of it? But you would say that uh, to kind of like excuse yourself to be like, "I am coming into your home. Sorry for." Bothering, you know, like like oh, you're kind of bothering someone, but it's a polite thing to say. Ojamashimas, yeah. Mm -mm. Jama itself, uh, as a kanji, means obstacle or something that gets in the way. So that's where the name comes from. Yeah, because they intrude. They are very annoying. They like to have fun at the expense of others. They are. How do you say? Not psychopaths. Sociopaths. <laughs> they have barely any conscience for others. They only care about themselves. Uh, but they love each other. Yeah, they're, they're quite... They're, very, they're trolls. They're very trolls. They're very much trolls. Mm -hmm. Right? They have subunits. They have subunits. Kind of like an AKB-48. <laughs> they have subunits. So, right here we have our... Three main subunits, all of them together. Ojama green, Ojama red, Ojama yellow, Ojama black, Ojama uh, blue. Together are the super team buddy force, shown here. And their two subunits, their main subunits are Ojama trio, which is the most famous one. With Ojama yellow, Ojama green, and Ojama black. There's also Ojama duo with Ojama red and Ojama blue. But our main characters are the Ojama trio. Yes. Yeah. But... And they say... 
they do say that when the Ochama trio gets together, yeah, they have Sentai pose. They're very, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they get together, things happen. They make things happen. Things is a very, very wide net to cast. But in Ojama Delta Hurricane, you can see that these three, the Ojama Trio, Ojama uh, Yellow, Green, and Black, when they get together, they can make crazy things happen. So they can be powerful if they feel like it. It's just very unreliable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The newest Ojama... Is Ojama Pink. He is very cute. He's just a scrunkly, sleepy boy. But we haven't seen much of uh, anything yet. He has not been added to any roster. But yeah, yeah, he's very cute. Yeah, he's new. He's the newest uh, addition. But we don't really see him that often. <laughs> Pippa? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> he's really cute. I like him. I like him. He kind of looks like an ugly doll. Yeah, he's ugly cute. Anyways. The Ochamas live together in Ochama country, as you guys can see here. Uh, we have a lot of them. There's, there's few that are not named. There's one in the sky right here that's a little yellow right here. There's a green one that's unnamed. There's also some here that are also not named yet, but they live together. Now... This is the most cursed part of this entire thing. It's a doggy dog world out there. They are creatures and they do get preyed upon. They do get eaten. They do get eaten. So monsters do eat them. They do eat them, right? Uh, you would think, oh, they're eaten by dragons or something. But no, we got harpy ladies hunting them for food. <laughs> In Harpy's hunting ground, you can see her swooping in for some... For a nice dinner of Ochamas. <laughs> and for those of you who cannot remember what the Harpy ladies are... Remember my Kujaku. She... It was her main archetype. So this is the Harpy lady and she is hunting. <laughs> Um, so... At first, there might be some reasonable doubt. You know, may maybe... Maybe the Ojama is... You know... <laughs> strictly me. <laughs> You're like, oh, but the Harpy ladies are hot! Look! Mai is sexy. Everyone's so free, So freaking sexy. There is no way. Absolutely no way that they eat them. And I wanted to, like, huff copium and believe that. Well... In solidarity. This is known to be not true because... As you guys can see... All of our main trio avoids getting eaten. And they're holding their solidarity... In a pile of bones. And if you look closer... At these pile of bones chat... You guys can see these right here? You guys can actually see which ones were eaten! In Ojama Country! <laughs> you guys can see the... <laughs> the specific one! So, like this one, the green one with the one antenna! He's right here, you can tell because he has one antenna bone. Ojama Lime was eaten, yeah. The star Ojama's bones are right here. And then this little gray one in the back is... He's, he's right here. Yeah. So... <laughs> It's a crime scene! Yeah, but our friends, our main group survived! <laughs> yeah, Ojama Lime is dead, guys. Ojama Lime is dead. R.I.P. to the lads. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's a dark con. They look so happy! Their uh, spirit is unbreakable. Unbreakable. Mm. You know, like a war movie. Ojama to itadakimasu! So, yeah. That's the sad part. That's the cursed part of this whole lore. But... At some point... 
Oh, wait, Ochama. Wait, no, no, no. Ochama. I, ah, no. One of the slides died. Hold on. The slide died. But the o M Ochama Emperor rules Ochama country. I don't have a picture of him. The slide is gone. Um, an Ochama yellow becomes his knight for a bit. Let's go. As you guys will learn, Ojama Yellow is probably the main character of the Ojamas. He gets featured the most out of every other one. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so <laughs> keep that in mind. He is, he is like the main character. Yeah, we're never getting lying. He's dead. He's dead. Uh, when Ojama Trio combine, they become a false king. As depicted here, I think I ruined the presentation a little bit. Something got broken. So they become Ojama King. Uh, let me pull up a picture of it anyways. Hold on. Ojama King. Uh, let, me, let me pull up a picture of it. Uh, just in case. I think my presentation broke somewhere along the way. But have no fear, Shino will solve the problem. So this is Ojama King. Uh, they can combine together into a false king. But the true emperor is actually Ojama Emperor. The true emperor... Right here. Their true ruler looks like this. <laughs> so... So there's that. Yeah, don't you guys know? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a <laughs> he's a synchro monster. <laughs> he's a link monster. Yeah, a king king is a fusion. All all three of them together make Ojama King. And as you guys can see here, they have adventures together. The uh, Ojama King joins other monsters and big march of animals and the big cattle drive to defeat the famous boxer Desk Kangaroo, depicted right here. Yeah, they go to a boxing match. They're quite... They're boxing fans. Yeah. Yeah, they're boxing fans, you know? Uh, they want to participate too. They want to have glory. They want to have fun, you know? Uh, but unfortunately, they do get beat up a lot. They do get beat up a lot. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what animal are the Ojamas? They are no animal. They are just Ojamas. They're just annoying scrunklies. You know? Uh, Ojama Yellow is the main character of the Ojamas. Oh god, a, a lot of my slides are broken. Oh no! My slides broke! I had so much prepared! And now they're all like, not here. Ah! It's okay, it'll just be a little harder. So, Ojama Yellow is the main character, right? Over here. Um, he gets featured a lot. He gets tortured a lot. I just... Uh, oh no, it didn't get featured. All my work is gone. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, let me get the Arm Dragon. Arm Dragon. Ojama Arm Dragon. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. Uh, oh, damn, hold on, hold on, hold on, where'd it go? Okay, Ultra Match. Ultra Match. Save image, hold on. We'll just do this old fashioned way. So, Ultra Match, as you guys can see, right here, he takes on an armed dragon. An armed dragon level 5. Armed dragon. Level 5. Arm Dragon Level 5, which is another card. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This guy is featured in this card. And he, as, as I said, they're boxing fans. So <laughs> he gets absolutely beat up and destroyed by it. Yeah, he gets, he gets absolutely destroyed at some point here. He does not look like he's going to win this one. This is going to the Arm Dragon for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll drop a yellow. And then after this, the they they kind of work out. They work out. Uh they get powerful through training. An Ultra Muscle. Right? They get trained somehow. An Ultra Muscle. To train for these box 
boxing matches. Again, they're boxing fans. They have a training, like, Rocky montage. <laughs> very, very, very cute. Very, very cute. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also become heroes. Um, hold on. Um. Hold on, where's the card? Where's the card that he appears in where he battles? Ah, where'd it go? Uh, oh, Drama King. But there's a card where he, like, helps the in the battle of GX versus Duel Monsters. I don't know where, where that one went. Hold on. It's not Fastball Special. It's something else. I have it. Hold on. Let me let me go into... Yeah, yeah he is not a quitter. That's for sure. Uh, let me see here. What's it called? I have all the files. I just... Need to look through them to make sure I get all the images. Oh, this one. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dimension explosion. Dimension explosion. Dimension. Dimension explosion. Uh, yeah, 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 this card, this card. I forgot the name. Eh, he's featured in here too. So he does become a hero. All three of them fused together to help out in this battle. You can see Dark Magician here as well. Uh, very cute. <laughs> so they do, they do, they are helpful sometimes when they choose to be. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, the uh, next one is broken too. Oh my god. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know why this is broken. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 this one's fine. So in Nitwit Outwit, you guys can see the Ujamas here. There's the trio. There's red. Oh, there's, oh, there's red here. Red, uh, yellow, and black throwing rocks at the six samurai. <laughs> That's Shein! It's Shein! This is Shein from Six Samurai! Yeah. They... <laughs> They're very small! But yeah, they, they they won this battle at the very least. Yeah. Uh, first time seeing this card. I know! I know! These rascals threw boulders onto the Six Samurai, which was a meta archetype a while back. <laughs> they are so cool, right? Uh, the theory is that they're getting payback because they, uh, tried to assassinate them as ninjas. Uh, but got exposed. They failed. Uh, but as you guys notice here, there's three yellows. There's three yellow ojamas. And that is because there can be multiple ojamas of the same color. So, I don't know. I don't know what this means. Yeah, apparently they reproduce. They can clone themselves. I have no clue. Hopefully through asexual reproduction, but I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> They're like Pikmin. They're like Pikmin. Exactly. Yeah, they can clone themselves. Like Shadow Clone no Jutsu. Hopefully asexual reproduction, because I cannot... Let's not think about the uh, other way. Yeah, let's not... I do, I do not want to think about them zug-zugging. <sighs> Ojama Yellow. Ojama Yellow. Our lovely friend. When will he learn? When will Ochama Yellow learn? <laughs> uh, so, um, in... <laughs> this is Eleki... Elekiansuru. Elekiansuru. I believe this card in English is called Wat Cancel. Um, but in Japanese, in the OCG, it's called Elekiansuru. He is getting electrocuted. <laughs> and uh, in painful decision, our Ojama Yellow has to decide between Ojama Green and Ojama Black to save from Jaws. So poor guy has to make a painful decision. <laughs> And uh, his friends aren't even thankful because he did save them both somehow, right? Um, but they end up experimenting on him and probing him in Ojama Simulation. Right here. <laughs> they, they really just did that. They really 
Really? <laughs> Poor Yellow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also gets a uh, hit in the Indiana Jones trap of all time in Treasure Panda, getting crushed by that rock. Uh, he did not survive. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the five dollars you bought, Miss Dana. She didn't wish you your relationship was strong. Kaiba and Blue Eyes or you see in his motorcycle. Kaiba and Blue Eyes. Yeah, because I think you say like like has a a normal boy fascination with his crotch rocket, uh, but unfortunately, Kaiba has a very unhealthy obsession with dragons. You know, I, I, you see doesn't give that like my life, uh, my how do you say? True, uh, true life. I don't know. There's this one show on MTV in which a guy was like, I'm in love with my car. Uh, you see, he doesn't give that, like, very, very those vibes, you know? He gives off normal boy vibes. He likes fast cars, you know, crotch rocket. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I'm pretty sure some of you can relate. He has a very healthy, normal boy obsession with uh, motorcycles, okay? Um, but but um, Kaiba with the, fr uh, the blue eyes, not so much. <laughs> not so much, okay? Not so much. All right. <clears throat> uh, but despite how annoying they are, they have most. They have also been given a specific attraction by the amazement crew. So in the Amazement crew, they have made a Ferris wheel that features the main Ojama trio. Uh, kind of like at their Disneyland, which is kind of cute. Yeah. So even as annoying as they are, I guess they are funny and entertaining. Like VTubers. <laughs> you guys never heard of Crotch Rocket? I, I thought that was a pretty common term to call, uh, you know, a motorcycle a Crotch Rocket. It's literally what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they, they appear in the Amazements trap card too. Very, very, very cute. It's pretty common. Yeah. And hopefully we'll see more Odramas in the future. Now! <laughs> yeah, monk car people, baby! Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I heard it though. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah, Japanese sports bikes are called, uh... Yeah, yeah, like Kawasaki's or like crotch rockets, exactly. So, Jinzo! You guys, uh, every, he has a lot of fans. He has a lot of fans. I was surprised at how many people really love Jinzo. Um, and there's not much lore to him. But, uh, all you need to know, really, is, uh, hold on. All you need to know about Jinzo... ACC Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid. But that's all you need to know. I, I, I wish I was joking. They're both owned by Konami. They're both based off of the same sort of character. There's definitely some crossover there. <laughs> Metal Gear! And to even further prove this connection... Uh, this Konami connection... Snake appears in Yu-Gi-Oh! That is Solid Snake! Right here! He appears in Yu-Gi-Oh! In Tactical Espionage Expert... Solid Snake appears in Yu-Gi-Oh! Canonically... Yeah! If you guys didn't know... <laughs> it was an Easter egg! Exactly! <laughs> You guys didn't know! Yeah! Mmm! Amazing, amazing. I think, uh, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of references in Yu-Gi-Oh! Which will... We will segue into. We will... S I know he's all juiced up in Yu-Gi-Oh! style. Super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Cyber energy shock! I know, I know. Shocking, right? So, let's play a game, let's play a game, because Yu-Gi-Oh! actually has a lot of these very, very fun references uh, that are, you know, not very subtly hidden sometimes. So let's start off, let's start off with, we'll descend into this little rabbit hole together. Alright, let's play a game. <laughs> Any guesses? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, very subtle. Oh my god, I can't believe you guys are so smart. Castlevania. <laughs> it's a Castlevania reference. It's a Belmont reference. I, I didn't I didn't have the correct like cover art, I know. But I didn't want to include the Netflix cuz the Netflix wasn't out when this was made. So, yeah. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> It's Castlevania. Yeah, it's Castlevania. Very cute, right? It's a very... This is obviously a huge reference. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's play again. Let's play again. Sorry, I keep doing that. I know, I'm putting too much emphasis into my P's. And then it goes in... <laughs> and then I go... Like, a, like, a, like, a, like an engine. Yeah. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 <clears throat> oh, like a weird cat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any takers? Any takers? Any takers of Rendra, uh, Raven Dread Slayer? Any takers? There's actually two answers for this. There's actually two correct answers. You guys are getting it is fun! <laughs> Spawn and Resident Evil together is the Rev and Dread. Uh, it's the Rev and Dread archetype. Very, very cute. <laughs> and Resident Evil. Why are you? It's a setting. So the characters are based off of Spawn. But the setting that they exist in is RE. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you can't really see that from this card. So I didn't want to like include it. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Very cute. All right, this one's very niche. This next one... This next one is very, very niche. You gotta be like... A super boomer... Konami fan to know this one. <laughs> ah, no, not Galaga. No. It is a sunfish, but... All right, all right, all right. Ready? Nobody's getting it. Nobody's getting it. Space Mambo is a reference to an old Konami game called Space Manbo. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I got one more. I got one more chat. I got one more. I got one more. Yeah, it's a 90s game. It's very boomer. Yeah. One more, one more. <laughs> one more, one more. One more before I get off the internet for the day. La Sulfacord Angelia. <laughs> any guessers? Any guessers? Any guessers? It's a surprise. It's a surprise. All right, no one's getting. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? <sighs> What's that song? A song? Uh, was it? Was a sister? Sadistic surprise. <laughs> Unconfirmed. It's not official information, but there's no way. There's no way. It looks the same. <laughs> they have a point. It's <laughs> it could be a coincidence. This one's not officially confirmed, but there's no way that there's no like crossover here. It's too close for comfort. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, 
be careful. Uh, if your wife was Angelia, uh, you know... She might come with a little <coughs> surprise, if you know what I mean. Yeah? Yeah, she might activate her trap card, you know? If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> And with that, that is all the information that I am leaving you guys with today. <laughs> did I give you guys brain worms? Did I give you guys... Did you guys learn something new today, chat? Oh my, my, butter cookies. Thank you so much for coming to my presentation today. I will not mint your grandpas into NFTs. Now, would you be so kind as to comment one fun fact you learned from my presentation today and as well as other cards you want me to cover in this fashion. I loved making this for you and I would continue. I would love to make more if you guys wish. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to my very, 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 very first. Your mind has been expanded. I know, right? It's, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So what does what does Pot of Green do, chat? He do what he do. That's the most important thing we should take away. Hey, we're twenty dollars. You wow, Billy Witch Doctor. Thanks for the presentation, Gina. I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh on and off for twenty years, and never knew the card lore went this deep. It goes so deep. This is just the beginning of the iceberg. There's also a lot of other lore that I can cover. Yeah, just yeah. I can I can expand your brain more in the future. But this is my very first one that didn't uh didn't feature a how do you say like a. A, f a fast food, a fast food thing. So I'm glad you guys like it. Let's read some supas that I might have missed. Okay, it's time for supa reading. Hold on. Let's <clears throat> see. Uh... Ah, stream elements. Thank you for ten dollars supa, mouse pad. Thank you so much. Arigato. Thank you. Mm. My favorite part was learning about the Upstar Goblin. Make sure to comment below after this is over. All right. Thank you so much. Again, Billy Witch Doctor. Thank you so much for the super. Ah, thank you, nobody. Thank you so much for gifting five members to the Butter Cookie Tin. Thank you so much. Uh, Ragnar, thank you for the super. Ah, TGC lore is perhaps the nerdiest thing there is next to running a Linux PC. Listen, I'm a VTuber. I think every VTuber has their thing. Jelly has Neopets. I have my Yu-Gi-Oh. Everybody has something, you know. Uh, Pippa has like a lot. <laughs> she likes Build-A-Bear. She likes, she likes uh, Thundercats. You know, everybody has their thing, you know. <clears throat> Thank you, the Piss Bandit, for your super chat. Sheena, which Yu-Gi-Oh relationship is stronger? I think I answered this earlier, but thank you for your super. Thank you. Arigato! Mm. Alright, let's see here. Thank you, Skeptical Panda, again for subscribing to my newsletter. Thank you for the shupa! Thank you, CLP99, for the $10 shupa. Thanks for listening, Sheena! I just found my old card too. Now I can run my tournament armed with knowledge. I hope you have fun! I hope you have fun. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm glad I reawakened an old interest. Hmm? Ah. Uh, let me know if you guys uh, find some cool lore tidbits. I will try to figure them out for you if you guys are interested. Mm. Thank you for the five dollar. Uh, don't know, Samurai in the Shadows. Not gonna. Uh, thank you for five dollar. Don't know. Uh, I got to lie when I first. When I, not gonna oh lie when I first played Yu-Gi-Oh. I had a really big deck, and sometimes I would win from my opponent not being able to draw because we played for that long. The gift of greed start with something else. Yeah, that was a dirty play, but that was pretty common back in the day. Games took a long time. Now it's super fast. So thank you. For uh, thank you, Hoppy, for your super, for your comment about uh, um, fairies. Thank you, Zako person. Thank you for the super. I did go over the mistake card. I did go over. I, I forgot to put it in there, but thank you so much. Thank you for the super. Super Neo King, thank you for the super. What about the other sins? Pot of Sloth. Thank you for the super. I didn't have enough time to cover everything today, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Kitsneko! Irie's last brain cell for your $2 soup. Ah, thank you! Orbital Vagabond! Can we take a re Can we have a, refer a referee take a look at this? <laughs> I think it was legal at the time it was played, Orbital, but thank you for the soup. Ah! Uh, Bongo Bingo Tango Mango! I asked the real heart of the cards. Cheating! 
say that to Kaiba. <laughs> Screw the rules. I have money. Thank you, Rishi. Bah! Bungo, bingo, tango, mango. Thank you, Ryan Glasner. Uh, for the shuba, arigato! Thank you! Thank you, arigato! Kitsneka, thank you for the shuba! I summon Pot of Greed to face up attack position! Thank you for summoning Pot of Greed! Arigato! Thank you, Reiner! For the shuba! The Pot of Greed was so hard to understand that it had to be... It had to be banned. <laughs> That's exactly why! It's... It's... It's so... It's just nobody could understand it. It was too difficult. Nobody could read. Mm. King of Tozers! Oh man, Pot of Greed is really complicated. I can see why they always had to explain or else I would never in, uh, remember. Thank you for the shoe. Ah, thank you! Lennon, I still don't get it. I still don't get it either. But I hope I have expanded your mind just a little bit. Guys, thank you, Dr. Know? Dragon, for the $5 oh, shoe. Ah, thanks for your knowledge. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for the shoe. Ah, thank you. Mmm. Uh, hold on. Thank you for the $10 dono. Yo, no, ske mi hata. Thank you for the stream, Sheena. I had an unhealthy assertion of Yu-Gi-Oh! So this stream was an instant must for me. Thank you for teaching me some lore. I never really delved into it and would love more like this. Thank you! I would love to make more for you. Just let me know what you want to learn. And I will do all the uh, hard work. The hard, the hard part. So you guys can enjoy it. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yura for the Shuba! Correct spelling is B and. <laughs> Ban! <laughs> no! You're gonna, you're gonna degrade the English even more in my chat. My chat already are completely illiterate and can't understand English. Come on! We gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. Thank you, Super Nail King! Wait, it's no more Kai. He's turning into she. I think I read this earlier, but thank you, Rena Shuba! Padrico Borelli, thank you for the Shuba! If I don't see World Legacy lore, alright. Nobody normal knows what World Legacy is, my friend. You can have a riot of a man of one over there across the street. I will take a picture and post it on the internet, but thank you for your Shuba! <laughs> thank you! Thank you, Hostad Snimokay, for the $2 Shuba! Uh, thank you for uh, expanding my brain with Yu-Gi-Oh! lore. No problem. No problem. Dragging more people into the Shadow Realm with me. Yeah. Danny D! Danny D! I don't know. I think half my chat is like... an English Muzukashi. <laughs> it's okay. English is very hard. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> Uh, Danny D! What if you... Okay, I saw this earlier, but thank you for the shuba! Thank you, Shadow Man, for the shuba! That's on the 25th anniversary reprints. I have not seen them yet, so... Uh, I have to go look into that, but thank you! Mmm! The Taurus BSG! I'm old school duelist and gravekeepers will and always have been my main. Thank you so much for the shuba! The Taurus! Thank you! I've never played gravekeepers, but they were pretty cool. Thank you so much for a $2 uh, shuba! Does blight. Mine expanded in card bill. Thank you. Arigato! <clears throat> Johnny Bo for the fat. Thank you for the $5 shuba! Here's my first super chat and please do more Yu Gi Oh streams. It do what it do. I'll try to do more if you guys like it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you! I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, James Cass, thank you for becoming a member for one month. This is fun. Thanks for the stream, Sheena. No problem! Uh, my job is to make you guys have fun. So, mm. Chain Duel, thank you for the shuba! Yugi boy, thank you for your super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you, the Warpite! For the shuba, as someone who isn't allowed to watch when I was... Okay, I, I read this, but thank you, Warpite! Thank you for the shuba! Uh, Rubber Shoulder Soldier, thank you for the shuba as well. Thank you. Thank you for the two shubas. Rubbish Soldier, thank you. Arigato! And I think that concludes the super ch super chat reading today. Thank you so much for joining me. You almost gave me half the excuse me, Sheena. What world legacy is the bomb? I'm gonna have to send you to the shadow realm. Now I'm afraid. Listen, normal people who I by normal I mean people who don't play Yu-Gi-Oh would not know what world legacy is. That's why I didn't include it, my friend. But uh, if you guys want more niche stuff, just comment below. Maybe I'll cover it next time. 
Yeah, I don't want to scare people away with these big words. For now, we cover uh, the unga bunga basics. Yeah, mm -mm. I, it's pin. But I know you guys can't read. I know you guys can't read. Did you guys see the pin message? It says this will be an introductory lesson. That people who are a bit familiar with the original anime and GX can probably understand. Please do not worry if you're unfamiliar with the subject. <laughs> But we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players, we can't read, so I expected too much. But thank you for the $5 donut! Thank you! Thank you for the $20 shufa! Or $20 donut, Zuark, thank you so much! Arigato! Thank you, and that concludes my stream for today now! On Saturday morning, there will be a uh, collab stream, I think on Irie's channel for our one year anniversary as a group, as a unit, as a generation, Gen 2 collab. Uh, so make sure to be there if you guys are interested in that. Yeah. And then after that, I'll be having my solo anniversary stream. We will have a karaoke and a little chat as well as a debut watch along together. So I'll see you then, okay? Ah, it's a Shina! And if not, and until next time, Cookie Boy. Thank you so much for two dollars to back. It's Neko. I just said I don't expect. I I try to get you guys to read, but uh, I can't. Thank you for your shupa! Armful of madness! Thank you for five dollars shupa! You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, it's a Shina. Oh, it's a See you next time.